which is appropriate because this week's episode is all about planning, which we haven't done for this introduction. My name's Gemma. <laughs> and my name's Claire. And in this episode, we're going to be chatting to Monique Svensson. That's how you pronounce Svensson. it from Perfect Planner Company about planning and even planning on when you're going to have a poo. Yeah, seriously, that's going to happen. Skid marks. On the toilet. Yeah. yeah. Have a listen. <laughs> What are we going to start with? Well, you've just been defluffing your pants, you said. <laughs> yeah, you were defluffing the mic. I was. I've been defluffing my jeans because I've got the husky hairs all over my clothes. Have you defluffed today? I need to defluff. <laughs> I'm just so I'm wearing a long skirt. <laughs> defluffing the muff. There we go. Right. <laughs> We've got an extra voice if you're listening audio only. Oh, I didn't ask this before we started. The other day, I said to Claire, how do we pronounce Monique's surname? I heard all about this. Go on. How do we pronounce your surname? Svensson. Oh, I did get it right then. You did? Because I was saying, no, it's Svensson. Svensson. It's Svensson. Svensson. No, it's Svensson. Have you ever heard me (laughs) (laughs) introduce myself? My name is Monique Svensson. No, it's just like I say what I see in the very visual. And I was going, it does say Svensson. But no, it's Svensson. So we have Monique Svensson here. Hello. Hello. (laughs) And Monique is is one half of the perfect planner company which gets me all excited because how much do I love planning you love it I love planning she fucking loves it I do as well (laughs) but there's a thing that we were discussing before I like planning and writing it down whether it gets done is another thing. Well, it's a good job we've got Monique here then to help yeah, us. To offer you some so, top tips yeah. on planning <laughs> It is. I think we were saying this, weren't we, Claire, yeah. that I think there's something that is really cathartic about writing it down, getting everything out of your head, putting it on paper. It's a whole other thing, actioning it and making sure that you get it done. Mm-hmm. And um, But I think just people find that whole thing quite you know it takes the stress away Mm -hmm. it certainly does for me I know if I've got loads going on you know if my head's really really full I write it down I just feel better I just feel loads better and I think that that is how a lot of people look at planning you know it's just brain dumping getting it out your head getting it all onto paper and then getting it done for me personally I absolutely love and this is something that I guess we'll, yeah. we'll talk about in a bit, but it's a, the jigsaw puzzle. Here is my day. This is how many hours I've got. What can I fit in in these time slots that I've got available to myself? See, I think that's amazing. And I think because you do that, you are you can you can literally go this, this, this and this. And I get that. But it's then it's when I come to doing it, I go, well, I don't feel like doing that right now. <laughs> you little rebel. It's like, but then it's that whole thing of the human design thing saying, go with your intuition and go with what you want to do. And what I've found with this being a bank holiday weekend is I've tried to, when I've got time in between the puppy pooing and, and stuff like that, <laughs> I've gone, do you know what? I'm going to go and do that, that um, write that sales copy for that bit of email page or whatever in half an hour rather than if I plan it in and it and I am quite aware of whether I'm a morning person or an afternoon person and I try to plan around that but then some days you just get to that thing that's in your day and you go I don't really want to do that today so I I'll try and do it I'll force myself to do it but then I go is that the best piece of work or do I leave it until I feel more in flow like tonight or tomorrow it depends I suppose on what it is it depends what it is if it's something that's writing it's creative you've you've just got to be in the zone like I always allocate I I have weekly emails that go out and I always allocate Mm -hmm. Thursday is writing day I can guarantee you pretty much it will get around to Thursday and I don't want to write (laughs) at all because I'm not in the zone. So I will go off and do something else until I feel it. And we've actually talked about this before. And when I get that feeling of, oh, I'm ready to write now, is when I'm in the shower. Yeah, always. Always When it's not appropriate. I yeah. told you this. You need to get some chalk pens. Well, I just that take you can my write phone on with the... me now. In the and shower? I'm there. Yeah, because it's waterproof. Oh. It's, oh. Get the, the, if you haven't got it, the latest iPhone, not an ad. <laughs> 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 and what is the latest iPhone? Yeah, I what is got it? I've got the 10 Max, I think. I don't even know. 
but right. that one's a but 10. But that's waterproof. And it's waterproof. So I take it in the okay. shower. So I have that moment of inspiration. So I literally will be there with a head full of shampoo and then go, blah, 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 dictate it into the microphone. Oh, that's and then, clever. Mm-hmm. And it saves so much time because, because I can reel it off in five minutes. It's done, whatever's in my head. You know There's when you said you dictate it, do you use the voice to text? I use notes right, and then the little microphone button yeah. and just chat away into it. And, and it, it types it But does it you. type it for you? Yeah. 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 yeah, I've used that before. Someone showed me that about six months ago. I couldn't get over it. It's like a game changer. <laughs> it's, it's a amazing. fucking game changer. It really Total is. Total game changer. I love it. So, yeah, that saves. So that saves me having to spend all day Thursday writing, having creative writer's block, and I think this yeah. isn't interesting in the slightest. So next time you're reading one of my emails, know that it came whilst the I was shot. standing there with a head full of shampoo. <laughs> Defluffing, defluffing, <laughs> defluffing. Well, I never used to use shampoo because I listened to one of your other episodes when you were talking about the curly girl method, and I thought, oh, that was me. <laughs> that was me not shampooing my hair. <laughs> was that Gemma? When yeah. Gemma used to do curly girl method, and you were trying to be all sexy and natural, and then you yeah, didn't like it. Yeah, and then I didn't like it. Yeah. So I, I looked like, like a swamp donkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But going back to planning. No, yes. yes. Right. Could you? Start us on your journey then. How did you get into planning? Because I know it's not for everyone. It's it's it is down to personality, isn't it? It's a skill for some. Some people love it. Some people yeah. hate it. Some people don't really think anything of it. So what's your yeah? Journey some people on it? are very sort of fly by the seat of their pants, and then there are others like me that were a self confessed control freak, mm-hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> you know I just and that came from my from my background so I started out over 20 years ago I think you winced then I know because I feel old (laughs) yeah but we don't we don't feel old we still feel 18 remember yes we do very youthful after this podcast we'll feel 18 yes definitely (laughs) definitely definitely so yeah no I was no it was probably 25 years ago I started out in theatre well, very, very, very early on in my journey, I was a um, very slight little ballet dancer. Um, but after many injuries and all sorts of things happening to me, I moved into theatre as a stage manager um, and worked off West End, West End shows, touring shows, international, all sorts of things for the, you know, 25 years. And it's a mat- meticulously organised job as a stage manager. Oh, you have to absolutely, be. Absolutely, yeah. Everything has to be by the book and everything has to be on a clock and everything has to run perfectly. Although, I mean, things go wrong, of course they do, you know, but when an audience is sat there at the front and they're watching a show, generally they will see something that's picture perfect. But what is going on behind the scenes is a very, very well-oiled machine and it has to be organised you know, and it was a very, at the time when I started out, it was a very paperwork heavy kind of role. You know, you would, um, you'd be writing cue sheets for people. You'd be writing um, rehearsal schedules and, you know, and there are rules when it comes to actors, actresses, performers. There's There are rules, you know, about certain timings and things like that. People can't work over a certain amount of time because then extra costs are incurred. Mm-hmm. And so everything had to be done by the book. And did you find that came naturally to you, though? Yeah, yeah. So, and it you, did. did you really enjoy it? Did you thrive I loved, on I it? Thrived on it. And I, it was it not until you got into that role that you realised, or did you know that you liked that anyway? I knew I liked organisation. Mm-hmm. You know, I would always, you know, I my bedroom had you know labels, labels and you know and <laughs> did yours yeah no <laughs> I wasn't that bad at that yeah. point do you have a label maker now though? no I don't yeah. I, I do you know I have looked at them a few times but I know that it would probably end up in divorce or yeah. you know you've you've seen <laughs> my husband you know what he's like my labels would just be profanity Oh, dicks on yeah. everything. <laughs> so his pants, you should just label his pants drawer <laughs> dick drawer <laughs> 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 but no, I think I think my husband probably was close to divorce the day that I came out with my Dymo label maker and started labelling, <laughs> you know, my daughter's drawers, underwear drawer, sock drawer. You know, I was really excited <laughs> by it. I, th- I think you'd like that, Jacob, oh, as well. <laughs> it's just a brilliant thing to have. 
Even even the umbrellas have got an umbrella label on the umbrella drawer, you know. <laughs> so yes, it did come very it's naturally, and I loved yeah. it. So um, so it's been it's been there the whole time, and um, I carried on after I had my first daughter. Mm-hmm. I've got two children. Isabel is nearly ten, um, and I carried on working in theatre when I had her, but it's not a very mummy friendly mm-hmm. kind of career. Um. A lot of careers are not. not not No, they're not. At all. They're not. But I was determined to be the only 35-year-old woman working in theatre and in a high role and to carry that on because it started as as you got older, it was a very male-led business in the end. You know, all the girls were a lot younger, but when they got into their 30s, they all dropped off. And I was like, no, I'm going to carry this on. I'm going to show women that we can do this, we can still work in theatre. And I did for a long time. I did for another five years, I think. But it was really hard. And then at the time I was working on, I was stage managing Warhorse. Oh, wow. Which was just an amazing, amazing piece of theatre. You know, for anybody listening who might not know what Warhorse is, please can you describe it? Because... It's amazing. Oh, it, it was um, taken from the book by Michael Morpurgo. Uh, it was a National Theatre production and it was sort of the revolutionary kind of puppetry. Yes, it, yeah. was, it was insane. So they built life-size horses that were operated by three strapping young lads in each horse and the whole movement and the puppetry behind, I mean, we had puppetry directors, movement directors um, that helped these guys in the horse and everything that they did was to mimic the movements of a real life Mm -hmm. horse. People rode the horses as well. Wow. Um, And it was beautiful and, you know, the curtain would go up and the first of the horses would come out and you'd hear the audience go, (gasps) oh! Mm-hmm. And you would see, is this, you didn't see quite so much the two in the in the middle and, and the back, but you would see the one operating the head. But within about 30 seconds, you wouldn't even notice that they were operated by humans. Yeah. They were, you would think you were watching a real life horse on stage and it was magical. Yeah. But with that magic came 80 hour working weeks. With a child? With a child. Oh my God. How did you do that? Good time management. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent organisation. It was a military operation, though, and as much for somebody that loves planning, it was actually flipping stressful because I had what I called an army of childminders. My husband was on tour as well. Right, so explain that because your husband's a professional drummer, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's a musician, so he's a drummer, and he was on tour as well. So we were trying to juggle... All of this with him on tour, he was on the road somewhere, I don't know. I was doing these insane hours and I had to manoeuvre Isabel from place to place and schedule for the cast. So there was a cast of seven, um, well, a company of 70 people, again, working with all those time restraints and everything like that. So I had to look after them, make sure that was done. Okay, so that's when we were going to be rehearsing. Now, how am I going to fit my life into that? Um, How am I going to fit my daughter into that? Look at the stage management team that we had. Okay, so if you do these hours, I'll do this hour and I'll do here, you do that. And it literally made my head explode every single week. Did you you have mum mum guilt as well or were you okay about that? I, yeah, it's... It was very. And don't feel if you didn't have mum guilt. Don't no, feel bad saying no, that you I didn't. did because that's what left me to leave yeah. and give it all up. Yeah. In the end, the mum guilt was too much mm-hmm. and it et at me. But because I had this thing, you know, I'm going to be that 35 year old woman plus, you know, that's going to yeah. show we can do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to give that up. Yeah. I wanted to say I I could do it all, but I couldn't do it all, and I couldn't. I just physically couldn't deal with those hours and all that planning which is you know again it's ironic but it's just something to be said about planning you can be completely organized and completely on top of planning everything but sometimes we can't do it all Mm. and we have things are just out of our control as well we have to let it go absolutely and then so 
yeah, so I had to, in the end, um, oh God, I just knocked that. Did that just go ding? It's all right. Sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? So uh, I lost my train of thought there. So, yeah. The mum um, guilt. Mum guilt. So, no, initially, mm -hmm. no. But mm -hmm. as it got more and more intense because it was a mega show mm -hmm. and puppetry rehearsals, we were just talking about the puppetry behind it, took eight weeks before we even started bringing other performers into that and there would be a rotation and also what happened was these guys in the horse were taking a hell of a lot of weight on them so they would get injured we had an on-site physiotherapist but and God. you know inevitably their shoulders would be taking it you know they, they had to train really really hard to be inside these horses you know they were extremely fit um but it took its toll because they would then go off sick, so we would then have to bring other people in and we'd mm -hmm. have to rehearse them, mm -hmm. and it was a never-ending cycle. And in the end, I thought, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Then something happened in my life which just made me say, stop. I can't mm. do it. Are you okay to talk about that? Yeah. You don't have to if you don't want no, to. No, no, we, we talked about this. Um, so I had decided in my madness that it's time for a second child. So I thought we could take that on as well. Uh, already doing 80 hour weeks. Already doing 80 hour weeks. how old's your, your eldest daughter at this point? At this point, she was 18 months. Wow. So she was So you got really, a toddler? Mm -hmm. I've got a toddler. 80 hour weeks. 80 Husband's hour weeks. on the road. Getting her, you know, she, my parents used to look after her on a weekend. So I'd drive her down there on a Friday night. I'd stay there. I'd go and do the show, come back to theirs. They'd look after all day Saturday. We'd drive back up on the Sunday. It was mad. It was cra It was absolutely crazy. Um, and we also had a living nanny that would do the weekdays. Um, so we decided that it was time to try for a second child because I really wanted my two children to have a close age gap. But sadly, it wasn't to be. Um, and I did full pregnant um I had I was pregnant with a daughter but when I was 30 weeks um I lost the baby I had a, a stillbirth which was extremely traumatic and anybody that's been there you know my heart kind of goes out to anybody because I know how um tough that is emotionally physically um and I remember I was I was on the show that night. It was a Saturday night. And as you walked onto stage, there was a full, full length mirror. And I hadn't been feeling very well that day. And I just put it down to a bit of just stress, you know. Mm. I was just tired. We'd been in long rehearsals. I was 30 weeks pregnant and I was tired. And but as I walked onto stage, I caught a glimpse of myself and I thought, oh, my bump doesn't look right. In, it, what, in what way? It ha a pregnancy bump is quite full. raised and yeah. full. Mm. And I looked like I had a gut. Well, you know, I just yeah. looked like I'd eaten too much. You know, I didn't look pregnant anymore. I just looked out of shape. And I thought, that's not right. But being the person I am, I'm like, I'm powering on, I'm carrying on and did the show that night and I went home and my husband and I lay there all night, literally prodding mm. my stomach, going, come on, move, move. And nothing was moving, mm. you know, it just... And so but I was very determined still that nothing was wrong and... I went to the hospital that morning. It was actually his 40th birthday that oh. next morning. And we were going to, he's from Iceland. Um, and it was the last chance I could fly. And we were actually going to Iceland. And I'd arranged a surprise party for him with his friends over in Iceland. And our flight wasn't till six o'clock that evening. So I said to him, I'm just going to pop to hospital. They'll just check the heart rate. It'll be fine. And he said, look, I'm coming with you. And I was like, no, no, it's fine. I don't need you to come with me. Anyway, I went and they didn't find a heartbeat. And after a scan, they confirmed that the baby had passed away. Um, 
a little girl, which we named her Rosa. Um, and the hospital had to phone my husband because I, I couldn't do it. Um, and I think the worst part of all of that anyway was I then had to go on and give birth yeah. to her. Yeah. Um, and there's something about having a shock like that that makes you just take stock of your life um, and reassess. Um, and, you know, God, mentally we went through a lot. Mm -hmm. It was extremely hard. It was a horrible time. Um, but I had a daughter that needed mum. So mm -hmm. I carried on. And actually I went back to the show because... I didn't know what else to do. I knew that I had to do something else, but I didn't know what else to do. Um, and I went back to the show um, and I don't know if I had told you guys this previously, but I got pregnant again three months later um, and had a really, really nasty miscarriage. Mm -hmm. uh, lost the baby, had to have surgery this time. Um, and the doctor said to me, we're not actually sure if you'll be able to have another child. And I thought, okay, stop. So I handed him my notice and I saw out, I think, two weeks and I didn't go back. And I haven't worked in the theatre again since. And I then thought, okay, I need to do something. I need to be a mum to the daughter that I have. And because that's when the mum guilt kicked mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. I've been so busy pursuing my passion and my love and um, I need to do something else. So I did. I I went off and um, saw an ad for a home-based business that can change my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was, I was hoping you were going to say somebody sent you a spammy message on Facebook. No, it was no. in a group. It was yeah. on a, you know, a Facebook group. You is, know. It, is this network marketing? So this is network marketing. Ooh, because we haven't talked about network marketing. We haven't. Yeah, yeah, we haven't, yes. segue into a, let's get yeah. honest about network marketing. Another time. Another time. <laughs> <laughs> but for anybody listening who might not know what network marketing, MLM, multi-level marketing is, can you explain? Can I explain what my, it is? Um, it's a business that you'll work from home. The way I look at it is everybody will have a very different opinion on what it is. Mm. But the way I look at it is it's generally a product or a service-based business. The majority are based around healthcare mm -hmm. and you will retail products that you will not be able to get in the shops mm -hmm. to your network. You market them to your network. Um, and then you have the option to bring people into a team um, and work with you. And some people make a lot of money from mm -hmm. it and some Do people they? Do don't. they really? Because yeah. I've never really heard any any really big success stories from from network marketing and there's some huge success stories well, to yeah. name to name a few different companies so we've got like herbalife juice plus arbon i love arbon yeah oh. new tropic skin. tropics good as yeah. well new skin i used to do new skin i've got the new one skin of was few great. of their products pharmanex and new skin really good forever living Sci oh yeah forever living that's who yeah. i joined oh was it so yeah, yeah. i joined oh, forever living. aloe vera juice wow. i always say it's like drinking <laughs> the vera. devil's sperm it is it's <laughs> fucking horrendous <laughs> is it really it is a yeah. little bit like drinking you that and drink... i do still drink it daily do you why because <laughs> i like it it burns your esophagus <laughs> no but a small I feel part like... of you dies every time <laughs> Cleanses my colon. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Devil Fair enough. spam. If it makes you shit, not a problem. <laughs> I've never tried it actually. You yeah, don't want I'll to. Yeah, I reckon yeah, you'd yeah. like it. Do you reckon? Yeah. Mm. What, what, what? <laughs> I reckon you'd like it. I think if you were to mix bleach with bicarbonate of soda and a bit of fairy liquid, knock it back like a tequila shot, that's a bit like forever mm. living. And mm. I did, but I used to get it in them, those big yellow. Yeah, yeah. Well, they said like, they well, put they it in like the. Um, are they like two liters? No, they were liter things. Like oh, yeah, the big like plastic, plastic things. Plastic They've gone all, you know, um, eco oh, now. Sustainable now. They've gone sustainable. So. But yeah, I still drank it. I still drank my, my devil jizz. Your yeah, devil jizz. In, in the hope that it would make me thin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. I think if somebody told you, it would make you thin. <laughs> 
they were definitely fibbing. It's my mate Laura. She told me. It's like, yeah. it's those, it, there is, as, as I <laughs> say, there's, there's certain <laughs> network marketing companies that are really, really good products. They've got yeah. like the science behind them Absolutely. is really good. And then some of them, not I, I go, oh yeah, I think that one's a bit dodgy. At the end of the day. But it's whatever you believe in, isn't it? And I, th- I think so. And also, if you, you just can't buy it in boots, yet yeah, you'd go into boots. And pick anything off the shelves. Anything that yeah. you know nothing about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because your mate's selling it, oh, it's naturally dodgy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, and obviously I got a hell, of a, lot, a hell of a lot of that. I got, you know, pyramid scheme, you're scamming, you know, why would you want to rip your friends and family off? I'm like, actually, here's some really nice products. Yeah. That's yeah. all. Just yeah. if you Just buy them, them you then from me, then I can send my daughter to a dance lesson. You know, that's basically what it came down to. Um. And so I joined that, but I remember the day that Perfect Planner Company came came into mm. its own. Was I was I'd built a team at this point. Um, I'd probably been in it a couple of years. Not that comfortable, I must admit. I was like, I'm doing this. I know what I need to do. I've planned out my business. I've got it all sorted, but. I'm not I'm not loving it, but I could see that it could go somewhere. Yeah. Um, but at that point, I remember I had all my paperwork and I had a diary and I had, you know, this. That. And I love diaries, by the way, mm. I should say that I used to, you know, go to Paper Chase. And it used Stationary to be, pervert, mm. join the yes. clubs. <laughs> join the club. Yeah, you know, Paper Chase used to be a thing, you oh, know, an outing oh, for me and my yeah. sister. Yeah. I'd be like, what diary are you going to get? Yeah. You know, from Paper Chase. <laughs> Which pattern? And... Um, but yeah, I had my diary and everything and I was like, I cannot organise my business. And I'd started to create little worksheets for the team. And I thought, I don't know how to collate all this information and keep mm-hmm. it all organised. And it's just everywhere. And I remember I threw everything <laughs> in a sort of slightly hissy, dramatic, you know, theatre type mm-hmm. fit. <laughs> and said, this is it. I am going to create my own planner here. And I, there were, of course, there's other planners about, you know, I'm not the first and I certainly will not be the last. Mm-hmm. But nothing for me took things through the steps the way that I see it. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not saying that's right because everybody plans things in their own way. But coming from the background that I come from, I was very logical. You know, mm-hmm. if you do this step first, then you have to do this and then you mm-hmm. have to do this. And it all followed a format. No diary out there, in my opinion, f- took you through in your network marketing business that format. Mm-hmm. So I said to my husband the line now, which literally makes him want to keel over, which is, I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, babes, I've got this great idea. And he was like, okay. So he was went on board with it. Now when I say I've got an idea, he he looks like he's going to throw up because he's like, what what now? <laughs> what are we going to have to do now? <laughs> but um, you know, I and we it was perfect planner company was born. We were actually called was that ne- 2017. 2017. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were actually started out. We were called network marketing manager because I wanted something really really obvious. Um. And we started out with one planner and, oh, my God, learned so much just generally just about doing creating it, yeah, yeah. planners yeah. and some horrible messes and horrible hiccups and things went wrong. And we learned about printing. And I remember phoning up a local printer saying, hello, I want to print a planner, please. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, what was the how, response? Do you, how do you pick? How do you pick covers? I was like, do I just come down and look at what materials you've got? And and the response on the phone was like, oh my god, who is this girl? <laughs> he was like, no, you you design them. I was like, oh crikey. <laughs> so overnight, we became e-commerce. We became graphic designers. We became organizers. We learned about the printing trade. And we put our all into it because my husband didn't want to be touring as like he was anymore. Mm. And we could see, you know, some real value in it. Mm. And so we did. We created in 2017 the first of the planners, which was a huge success, um, more than we thought. Um, 
which led us to, in 2018, bring in lots of new products. So I started to create sort of various planning pads and notebooks and things like that that could really like help people. the meal planner. Like the meal planner. I love that. The meal planner. I've got, I've got this. It's like an A3 yeah. sheet. Yeah. Meal planning for the week. It's brilliant. And it's got the calories on it and everything. Yeah. Just but even just write it, even just spending a minute to write that out and leave it so where my husband can see it. <laughs> We've got the magnetic now <laughs> since you bought them and yeah. perforated, which I love. Mine is magnetic. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, I've got, got no metal fridge, that's the problem. Oh uh, yes, it doesn't yes. work for the um Can I wood. just ask with that? You know, you plan your meals in for the week. Yeah. Even if you don't feel like that meal, you'll have that meal because no, you well, yeah, it. I no, scrub it out. Okay. I've got erasable pens, remember? Right, that's so right. I rub it out and put something else in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, you're around. still making a note of it. Yeah. That, that's for me. I just go, oh, I could plan my meals for a week, but I might get to Thursday and I don't want spaghetti bolognese. So you rub it out and then put one. Yeah, I'm terrible for opening the fridge and going, we've got nothing to eat, and then shutting the fridge. And then my husband opens it and makes a Michelin star meal yeah. out of what was in there that I obviously couldn't see. Yeah. So I find it really handy to get the planner on a Sunday and go, right, what is actually in the fridge? What freezer tapas have we got? What Because we get these gausto meals Monday to yeah. Thursday, and then it's like planning mm, lunches and yeah. weekend meals around that. But it just it just helps. It just helps to go through. And, it does. Yeah. And, busy... and it helps people save money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially now, busy times, isn't it? We, we are busy. Every parent's work. Yeah. So planning in anything, not just meals, anything. Anything. It's mm-hmm. like I keep going on about if you don't plan your meditation in you're not going to do your meditation no, everything so that true. you want to happen you plan it in your diary I feel Absolutely. attacked <laughs> <laughs> not have you not been planning no I'm not she meditating hasn't been meditating she is planning a, a meal days. so you know this She's, is a good yes. start you could Your meditate life. while eating. <laughs> Mindful eating. I've been doing that. I've been Mindful setting a timer eating. for 15 minutes to make sure I eat and I take my time for 15 minutes. This is the level of sadness that I get to. Have you got an egg no. timer? Or... Yes, of course I have. <laughs> and I've got a timer on my She's probably got friends, all right? kinds of timers. I bet you she's, she's got, got about 50 timer. different timers. <laughs> What's one of them Them things with beginning with P? Pomodoro. 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 <laughs> Three of them. Oh, look, see the way you both look at you. <laughs> she just looked at you and yeah, Pomodoro. <laughs> I've got one of them, you fuckers. I haven't got one. <laughs> For anybody listening, a Pomodoro timer is a tomato-shaped kitchen timer that Francis Cirillo, when he was a student in the 80s, he it's saw his effect. grandma's tomato timer and thought, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that to try and help me study and eat. So the idea yeah. behind the Pomodoro technique is you do one focused task for 25 minutes. So you set your timer for 25 minutes. Tick tock, tick tock, yeah. And then you have a five minute break and then you do you another 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's called a Pomodoro. And after four of those, you have a 30 year. Jacob's getting the picture of the Pomodoro timer there up. There it is. Look, there lovely. we go. Tomato timer. Tomato timer, it's basically. It's a tomato yeah. timer. Pomodoro means tomato in Italian. There you go. That's why it's called that. Pomodoro. Pomodoro. I might get myself one of them. I should need join to. the club because you can't override it. You can't override it. That's so why it's better than a phone timer. Just tick, 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 tick. Sean hates it. It goes mental, but it helps me. So That's another, another, t- another tip. Another Pomodoro. Tip. Yeah. So you do your first planner in 2017. It goes amazing. You then create this whole suite of, of products. You, yeah. You're a graphic designer, an e-commerce expert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very stressed. I'm very stressed. But then, of course, you were also as well still doing events and things, aren't mm-hmm. you? Around this yeah. time, you've had your, you've had um, your your daughter, um, your third had, daughter. Yeah, I had Sienna. Um, so when I thought that I wouldn't get pregnant, of course, as it always does, mm-hmm. um, I fell pregnant with Sienna, um, and she's nearly six now. No, yeah, she's five. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I can plan, but I can't count. <laughs> Um, and, um, yeah, so yeah, this all happened at the same time, literally plan a business started pregnant with Sienna and it was, it, it's tough, you know, and then I started to sort of get called for corporate jobs. So I would do what I had been doing in the theatre, but in a corporate environment. So for corporate events, which meant that I would just go and do them for a, a day or two days and then they'd be over. And because we hadn't taken the business off, I thought I can still fit all this in. And my husband's still freelancing. He's still drumming. So life was very busy. So, you know, I had to use every 
planning technique that there was out there. I had to be extremely organized. And, you know, that's fine. I love it. You know, I mm-hmm. thrive mm-hmm. on that. If it's busy and I can organize everything that's going on, you know, I, I love it. Um, and, you know, the planner business grew over the years. We bought, um, we bought in a family planner, a parent planner, which we're actually not going to be bringing back. Oh, I know for for 2022, um, because we're going to concentrate on the on the business market now. Um, still, though, planning all the other things in a life. So it doesn't matter if you're a network marketer, an entrepreneur, online business owner, mm-hmm. or whatever you do, you still have to plan. Mm-hmm many elements of your life it isn't just your business everything has to fit in Mm -hmm. around that um and we so we're having a new brand come in mid-july which i'm really excited about um new podcast (gasps) oh you didn't tell us that bit in july which i'm excited about you know focused on planning because what's it called it's going to be called she loves to plan yes she does. I know. <laughs> she, she does, you know. She loves a good plan. <laughs> and um, it is, yeah, if I lived near her, I'd be here. <laughs> yeah. No. no. she's driven off from Essex. <laughs> well, no, she's, she's been at her in-laws and we've stolen her from the in-laws. <laughs> So, so we were like live an hour away so yeah okay. so we were like oh, so we messaged her two weeks ago and said yeah, can we on, steal you next steal. time you come up to the in-laws <laughs> but you've been to liverpool loads haven't yeah, you yeah i did In lots of shows days. here at the at the empire um and yeah lots lots of different lots of events and things up here so spent a lot of time you know when we're talking about planning you know we're saying that love to plan but actually like you were saying sometimes I just don't feel like it the implementation Mm -hmm. is quite hard what I really like about what you've done is yes you've got this physical paper planner Mm -hmm. that people can use and keep organized but you help people through a Facebook group and through your additional accountability services tell us a bit more about that so I have um, a membership group which is called the plan for success society um, because I do believe that, you know, we have goals. We all, you know, anybody that's in business, we have goals. You know, we have, we want to get to the next step. We want to get to the next level. We want to bring this income Mm -hmm. in or we, you know, we want to achieve whatever it is that we want to achieve. And we have long-term goals, you know, I want to buy a house or whatever Mm -hmm. it might be. And there's various steps along Mm -hmm. the way. But unless you have a plan, unless you're absolutely, Mm -hmm. well, clear on your goals when you know that you can then put a plan in place to Mm -hmm. make sure that you achieve that and that's what the plan for success society is all about it's a membership group where we really look at the kind of goals that people have and how we can get there by means of a plan to do that so I help them a lot now with their business strategy putting that all together with goal setting and accountability so we have calls um, really regularly now where we just get together and get the work done. They're focus work sessions. Can I ask you then in in the mem- in that membership and from your experience, what is it that, is it just for women? Is it, or is it? No, is, it's is it, not. It is only female. women in there. Yeah, but it is open for males yeah, as well. Absolutely. Um, what, what usually stops someone from planning? Because as I say, I know some people don't like planning. I always remember a guy that I used to work with lived day by day and he'd say, why would I want to write things down? Because it just shows me how much I've got to do. I don't like lists. (laughs) And I'd be like, you don't like lists? Why? But he was so, in the world of Myers-Briggs personality profile, you have someone who's a J who's classes, likes to be in control of the environment and someone who's a P who's like, just takes the day as it comes, still gets things done. But he was just not even on the scale was not even on the scale and when you spoke to me you you used to say it makes me feel physically ill writing lists but me and you were talking about getting that stuff out your head and onto a piece of paper is that is that quite therapeutic yeah it's a have you ever come across people like that in the group or do people sign up and then not use the services and I always think why what's stopping you from going for your goals I think I think it comes down those people mindset. it comes down to clarity yeah I yeah. think mindset there's lots of stops people do 
use a lot of excuses. You know, I'm too, I'm too busy. I've got too much going on. And I always say, you know, I don't want to be harsh, but we've all got lots going on. We've all got the same 24 hours in a day. Absolutely. And, you know, we, but it's how you use them. Mm -hmm. And I think if nobody, if they're not doing the work that's needed or they don't show up, I just do believe that actually you're not that into it. It doesn't mean as much as you might say it does because if you really, really wanted to do it, it could be, I mean, yes, we do have mindset blocks. We do, and we meet resistance from other people. Mm-hmm. You know, we necessarily might not necessarily have supportive partners. Yeah. But I had a one-to-one with a lady recently and, you know, her her partner was like, but you never make time for me. <laughs> you don't, you know, you're working. And so we sat down and we created the I, the ideal plan for her. Of course, it is not always mm-hmm. going to be like that, where we had to look at what she was doing. And it turns out that a lot of the things that she were doing were not particularly productive. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of time wasted. And when you sift through all of that, actually, and, you know, as we were saying about that Pomodoro method, if you've got, whether it's 25 minutes or however long you want to give yourself, if you know that you're just going to work in a short block and it's focused activity, what you can get done in that 25 minutes if you're focused is a hell of a lot of work. Um but it's, you know, it depends what people class as work. Some people mm-hmm. might just go, oh, I haven't got any time, but they spend all day scrolling on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. It's the it, autopilot, isn't it? It's like the non-conscious behaviours. It's And then I think with what you do, then it makes them realise, oh, there's so many things that we do. that like, I have to do this, I have to do this. And when you look back, you go, I actually don't have to do that. No. It's just, that's it's just a habit it's, that I do. It's, I should be doing this. Yeah. If this is what I want. Exactly. Mm. And... There, there is a time and a place and you know and now with a lot of people I say put that into your schedule put it into your schedule time to scroll just give yourself because we all do it yeah. and we yes. all want to do it yeah. so go go say at nine o'clock on on Monday evening that's Facebook scroll time or Instagram scroll so that you can go okay I can get that out of my system then yeah, yeah. and I can actually do mm. the work that I need to do in this allocated time slot that I've got. Mm -hmm. Um, I always, again, encourage people when they're looking at the diaries and their time blocking and managing their time to leave gaps, not to fill every single gap because things run over, you know, kids come in, you get disturbed, you know, especially, you know, at Mm -hmm. a time when we're all working from Mm -hmm. home a lot more than we ever were. We need flexibility and we need to be able to adapt to all of those. So we can't stick with a rigid time scale time scale but actually if you are regimented with your time when you certainly say that you're going to work and if it's only two hours that you've got make those two hours count and we do lots of things in the group you know where I will get people to look at their week at their whole week Mm -hmm. mark out what I call sort of non-negotiable things you know these things that you have to get done and that can be everything from eating to sleeping to Self care, self care, well, absolutely, is critical. Um, personal development, um, time with your family, um, chores, chores, <laughs> yeah, washing, having a poo, whatever it might be, <laughs> <laughs> cleaning the skin marks off your toilet. We were talking skin- about people. <laughs> you need time to clean the skin marks. You know, this has got to happen. It's just fact, isn't it? It's a fact of life. So um, you have to just allow it. And when you've done all of that, you'll be surprised. Not generally that much left. So you have to be Mm -hmm. really, you know, really mindful of your time and respect the time that you have and that you allow yourself. And celebrating what you've achieved in the day rather than looking at what you've not done as a person. Because that was something I used to do and we talk about that, don't we? It's like look at what you have done in that day and what you have achieved so that you can go to bed more on a positive. Yeah. And also then as well, I will say... Before you go to bed, brain dump again. Get everything out of your head. I know you do this before you you yeah. always lay out your journal, don't I do. you? My my role has changed since. So the reason why us three know each other is we were all on a course together. Yeah. We were all in accountability group together. And since we've done that, I've now gone into a full-time role and we do something called an end of day report back to so it goes it goes to my senior my supervisor and I just outline what I've done I outline how productive I was was my time management good and 
if, love it, don't you? I do actually. Me. I hate it, but I love it at the same time. And I actually wish, I wish I'd have had this process myself. So what happens is we do it through type form, you know, the online yeah, yeah. form thing. And then through Zapier sends it to a Trello board. Wow. Exactly. So you can see what you've done. I actually wish I'd have known about this because I think I would mm-hmm. have used it myself, you know, to monitor my own productivity. I bet that makes you, though, more productive. Because of course at the end it makes of the day, you more productive. Like, oh, God, so other people might see this. And, on, you know, on the and... way to this podcast tonight, as I was walking here, I had 22 minutes to walk here. I've written three pieces of copy because I want to be able to put that on my end of day report. Yeah. And it does make me more productive. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it is, you will, I think people don't realise what they're capable of until yeah. they push themselves. So whereas your life with an 18-month-old working 80-hour week, horrific, you know what you can do when you set your mind mm, to it. Absolutely. Which is probably why you were able to establish a successful plan of business with all those nuts and bolts. I remember when you did your launch last year and seeing the pictures of the pallets in the warehouse yeah. of all your products. And, you know, it, it, you see your, your planner on Amazon, for example, and it's just one single unit. And then you see it in a warehouse stocked and piled high and it really brought it home to me like shit that is a lot of work that's gone into making that happen yeah it's it's six months six months of prep to get it to that stage probably not for everybody Mm -hmm. in in the planner business but you know I'm constantly saying to my husband I've got an idea (laughs) and 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 I I was reading on stats as well before before this show to look at the planning business and stationary business and it's a a hundred in 2000 uh, 19 it was 113 to 118 million dollars looking to go to 157 million dollars in by 2023 it's um, a thing though people are stationary geeks and you know that but it goes back again to i think people were saying oh but everything's going to be digital and there's a lot of digital stuff but when you're coming into planning vision boards they're all most of them are touch and feel i do not remember anything unless i've written it in my own handwriting i have mm-hmm. to think in ink wanky mm-hmm. phrase alert i have to think in ink Think oh, in ink. Yeah. You, can, you can have that i'm one. gonna have that, I'm gonna that, use that. Society. <laughs> yeah you've got to think in ink but i still have my calendar i've got my color-coded google calendar yeah. which is but i have to think in ink but as the well calendar tells you what you're gonna do, do yeah. but for your thinking and your learning to be taken it's that cathartic thing what you said yeah. before it's it's coming out it's traveling down the arm it's coming out the hand you see in it and it's just it's and it's it's a beautiful thing as well you know I there's something I love about seeing my planner in front of me with it all written out you know and I'm one of I have erasable pens as well thanks to Gemma introducing me to the concept (laughs) of erasable pens you're very welcome and now it's a thing if I if my handwriting isn't neat enough it gets rubbed out and it gets (laughs) written again because it has to be good it's got to be Instagrammable absolutely (laughs) absolutely although I never actually put my real planner on Instagram it's just for anybody that's the uh, fake one that you've (laughs) Because <laughs> I made. don't actually want anybody to see my diary. Well, no, for they'll see. Have a poo in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's poo slot time. <laughs> Skip our <Come> clean time. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got for anyone listening? For for because we have a lot of different people listening, don't we? Top three tips for planning. What what would you give our listener who struggles with getting their life into some type of organisation? Um. Okay, three top tips. Um, number one, I would probably say prioritise. Um, we can't, you know, today's life, as we were saying, is so busy. We do so much and we can't always do everything. So I think especially when it comes to building a business, mm-hmm. um, but I say that, but it doesn't matter. You can be at home looking after a family whatever it is and if loading the dishwasher is your priority for Mm -hmm. that day and it's the only thing that you want to get you know that has to be done I think you just have to pick what is important to you and you know I say pick two or three things that are your top priorities that you feel are going to move you forward Mm -hmm. in some way or other Um, because we don't want to stand still I don't believe that we should stand still Mm -hmm. in life. I think we want to keep moving forward. We want to, um, you know, keep developing ourselves. So pick Mm -hmm. two or three things as a priority. Get those done. And if you do nothing else, at least you can celebrate 
as as you were yeah. saying, at the end of the day, and say, I've done that. You know, mm-hmm. I've achieved that. You can feel accomplished. Yeah. Can feel like you've had success in yeah. your day, and that puts you in a good frame of mind, ready to tackle the next day. Mm-hmm. So that's number one. Number two, I think, um, don't sweat the small stuff because. You know, it's again, it's just down to mindset. It's mm-hmm. down to um, us realising that we are not superhumans. That um, when we do write those to-do lists, um, I don't know about yours, but mine is full of stuff. And mm-hmm. I make it really full as well, even if I've done something because I'm sad. Yeah, you, you have know, to fill I'll it in. It, with, I'll yeah. fill it in and put the thing down that I've done just so I can tick it off. <laughs> I know I'm not on my own here, though. I you're know not, there's plenty not, of I other people it. out there that do it because it's, it's, it's gives it's you satisfaction. Quite, it does, it does. But if you can, you know, some things you've just got to let go. You, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that I will say to to my clients are, um, and this is another one of my tips, this is probably my third tip, is to brain dump, is to get everything out of your head, so especially if you're in a p- position where you might feel overwhelmed or stressed out. Brain dump, get everything out of your head, whether it is um, you've got to do the laundry or a room needs decorating or you need to do this step, these steps in your business. Just get it all out of your head. From there, you can then go on and prioritise mm-hmm. um, and see what is important. But you can also probably look at that list and go, do you know what? This has been in my head or on a list for six months. I haven't got it done. It's obviously not that important. Do you know what? Scrub it off. Get rid of it. It's, it, it didn't mean anything. Also, on the flip side of that, you can also see certain things and go, that's going to take me less than five minutes. Why have I not done it? Mm. And then you can get them done yeah. and, and off the list yeah. as well. Well, one of our new planners has got a little section on there for five-minute tasks. Nice. Because if you allow a slot in your diary for the day and say, right, this half an hour is going to be dedicated to five-minute tasks, you can tick six things off. It's done. Oh, that's mm. so satisfying. Six things. Six whole Six. things. In half an hour. Cleaning the toilet, having <laughs> oh, a poo. Amazing. Well, you know, it's all there. That's getting me excited. Putting the, lo- putting the laundry on. Ta-da. <laughs> well, talking of ta-da, that wraps it up nicely. If people want to find out more about the Perfect Planner Company and your Planning for Success Society, where can they find you? Uh, they, You can head over. We've got everything is on our website, which is a perfectplannerco.com. So you can find us there, Mm -hmm. perfectplannerco.com. And also you can find me hanging out on Instagram, which is perfectplanner.company. And that's where you can find out. Or you can hunt me out on Facebook. It's Monique Svensson. I'm so glad you said that. Because we'd have said Svensson. (laughs) Svensson. (laughs) Monique, it's been amazing to see you. Thank you so much for sharing your story and your amazing planning tips. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.